very much for having me here. Uh, I've spoken in front of thousands of people before, but suddenly when it gets a little more intimate, I get a lot of stage fright. Um, so, uh, like, like they said, my name is Alistair Woods. I'm the Vice President of Campaigns and Advocacy for the York Federation of Students. <laughs> we represent 50,000 full and part-time undergraduate students here at York University. And I'm here today to talk about troublemakers. The community organizer Saul Alinsky once said that if people don't think they have the power to solve their own problems, then they're probably not going to think about solving their problems at all. He wrote that in his 1971 book, Rules for Radicals, in which he offers advice to young activists like myself on how to win political change, influence public opinion, and of course, enrage politicians. He's a bit of a professional troublemaker and a personal inspiration of my own. It's why I kind of carry this thing around like a lonely planet guide. And when I'm kind of out on Queens Park, I'm like, what do I do next? Um, <laughs> but I think Alinsky would really, really like the theme of today, that an impact matters. Throughout his whole life, he was a strong believer that people could impact powerful political decisions, and that every time they did it, it was a victory for the true spirit of democracy. It was a victory for the true spirit of democracy more than any election victory for any party or any politician. And it's an idea that informs my own work and political philosophy today. Through my years as a campus organizer, I've come to learn a lot of things, and I've come to grow up. But among them, I've learned that I am passionate about being a pest to politicians and administrators and authorities. But more than that, I'm passionate about encouraging others to be a nuisance with me. But sometimes it can be difficult to get people to realize that they do have the power to solve their own problems. And part of this is because of the way in which we talk about and interact with political engagement. Let's be frank, it's boring and it's kind of disengaging. And I have a sneaking suspicion that politicians would like to keep it that way. You see, today, almost nobody has faith in our political institutions to do even a mildly competent job. Yet our disconnect from all this still leaves big decisions in the hands of the very bodies that nobody trusts to do the right thing. The Danish physicist Niels Bohr used to have horseshoes put above the doors of his office. And when an American colleague inquired about why something so superstitious was in the office of a man of science, Bohr simply responded, well, I don't really think it's true, but I've been told that it works even if you don't believe in it. And in a lot of ways, I think that this is how many of us view our democracy. I don't think any of us really believe that it works the way it should, or that it works for the common interest. But we go along with it anyways because we feel like it's the best we can do, or we feel like we can't make an impact to change anything. And in a lot of ways, I find that to be a shame. Some would blame this on apathy, but I wouldn't. As a matter of fact, I am of the radical notion that apathy doesn't exist. I actually think it's a cop-out. I think it's a way for powerful people to pawn off responsibility for their bad decisions onto the backs of others who had no responsibility for making those decisions in the first place. So trans affairs may go up and service may go down, as I so sorely experienced this morning when I waited 20 minutes for a bus and two passed me and were packed and then one got short-turned and I ended up having to take a taxi here. But my god, don't blame the people in charge of transit. Blame the disaffected voter, the disinterested youth of today, or the apathetic citizen. You know, you always hear about this, pundits and politicians. We are in a crisis of so-called Western democracy where nobody cares about politics anymore. And when I hear them talk about this, I often think to myself, well, of course people are disinterested with our political institutions. As a matter of fact, every day our political institutions push to make themselves more and more irrelevant to our daily lives. Dozens of politicians frequently complain about each other, about taxes, about spending, about scandals, and they frame government and politics as a nuisance to our daily lives more than a constructive tool with which to organize our lives. And so the point that I'm trying to make here is that almost nobody values our political institutions anymore. And not only is this a shame, it's actually dangerous. Because regardless of how any of you feel about Queen's Park or Parliament Hill or City Hall, these institutions still wield a tremendous amount of power over our lives. And so that I think we better start engaging with them, and I think we actually better start taking it seriously. So how do we start doing this? Well, first of all, we need to worry less about fixing our democratic institutions as if elections are the only way for our us to participate, thank you Paris, and we need to worry a little bit more about cultivating a democratic culture. You see, politics has always been and will always be a dirty game. Politicians lying is nothing new 
They've been lying for time immemorial. And though I'm sure a lot of them are very well-intentioned, and many of them are actually very good people, there are also a lot of them who are not well-intentioned and who have other things in mind. So if we can't expect our political representatives to keep themselves honest, then my response would be, we damn well better be willing to make sure we keep them honest ourselves. Second of all, we need to start moving away from this idea that just because our democracy is in poor shape, that it's not worth our time or effort to engage with or fix. You see, you can see the faults and the limitations and the weaknesses of something and still find its fundamental value. And I believe this very passionately about the idea of democracy. And finally, if we're ever truly going to change our political, social, and economic lives and build the better world of our dreams, we're actually going to have to organize both inside and outside of the system because we're not going to get the results we need by doing either or. You see, politicians hate one thing, and it's that you complain and you play by the rules and you do it really, really well. So if I'm a campus organizer and I'm upset about high tuition fees, and I want to fax in my concerns to the minister's office or my MPP's office, then maybe I'm going to do that. But maybe I may also, as I did last year, get about 3,600 of my friends to do that too, at the same time. Now, I think we may have broken the fax machine. I'm sorry. Um, but we're not doing anything wrong. And this is another thing that Alinsky said, that you're often going to have more of an effect playing by their rules and doing it a lot than not playing by the rules and doing it very little. In 1999, the former premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Brian Tobin, announced that he was going to freeze tuition fees for college and university students in the province. And it's something that still is in place today. And when he was asked by reporters why he did this, he responded pretty simply. The students of this province made it impossible for me not to do this. And I think in that one sentence sums up everything that I'm trying to talk about right, here, right now. Today, more than ever, with all of the immense challenges that face us, it's not only that we need to have less faith in our political institutions to do the right thing, but it's that we need to have more faith in ourselves that we can make them do the right thing. Because the solution to a broken democratic system is to be a pest and a nuisance, quite frankly. And it's something that I love to do. I love just hearing politicians get really upset. I once had a politician tell me that uh, you we give you bread and you cry for a sandwich. And I was like, I love sandwiches. <laughs> but, and you know, I was like, do you have one? But to, to, be, <laughs> to be honest, it's, it's something that is actually very true. As citizens, as residents, as people who participate in the political system, I think that we should be infinitely demanding of a better system, of a better opportunity, of better services. So I want to end off with a particularly unorthodox story, but I think it's a kind of funny, tongue-in-cheek example of how troublemakers can actually make a huge impact on even the most powerful political interests. So the year is 1964, and the mayor of Chicago has done two things. He just finished building O'Hare International Airport. It happens to be the crowning jewel of his administration. But because it's an election year, he has also decided that he's going to back away from promises he made to the poor residents of a neighborhood called the Woodlawn. Furious, the residents decided to organize, and they quietly tipped off the mayor's office of an ingenious plan they had concocted. They would all hop on some buses and head over to his crowning jewel, O'Hare International Airport. And they would send one person to each bathroom stall in the whole airport. And this was in the olden days where you had to actually sort of put a nickel in all the time. So they would each put a nickel in the bathroom stall. They would go in and they would sit down and they would lock the door and they would just sit there. And they would sit there and they would sit there until the mayor and his staff people met their demands. It was a good old fashioned 1960s occupation on toilets in the busiest transportation hub on the planet. Now, I'm not going to use the term that they did to describe it, but what I will tell you is that it rhymed with sit-in and is really vulgar. <laughs> now, I'm sure you can imagine the absolute chaos that would have ensued of people coming off of eight-hour flights with their bellies full of wine and pretzels and crappy airplane food. And panicked by these images and his tarnished reputation, the mayor decided that he would reach out to the residents and meet with them before they ever, ever had a chance to sit down and get comfy on the john. So it was kind of a victory for the residents. They didn't even have to do anything other than to concoct this hilarious but effective plan and tell the mayor they were going to do it. And so for those people and for so many others like them, I want to speak today in praise of the troublemaker. If only because they remind us that politics as usual, no matter how powerful, no matter how wealthy, is never a match 
for highly organized, well-informed, average people who are mad as hell. Because the solution to our broken democratic system is an army of troublemakers, of naysayers, and of rule breakers. Something else that I've learned by being a campus organizer and being involved in various other political actions is that there are a lot of powerful interests out there who don't want things to change. But with economies collapsing around the world, our planet on life support, inequality rising, things are gonna have to change. And if we're ever going to measure up to the challenges that face us in the 21st century, it means that we're gonna have to demand that change. And it means that we're gonna have to roll up our sleeves and rake a little muck. I personally believe that it's our only hope. Because the philosopher Goethe once succinctly put it, the world can only move forward because there are those who oppose it. Thank you very much.